Well, it's the end of 2019 and, well, I have a confession to make. I absolutely hate New Year's resolutions. In fact, I think I'm allergic to New Year's resolutions. However, when we talk about Guitar Geek New Year's resolutions, that's an entirely different story. I am all for that. So we're not gonna talk about diets. We're not gonna talk about exercise. We're not gonna talk about budgets today. We're gonna talk about Guitar Geek resolutions for the year 2020. And I've got 10 suggestions for your guitar journey. So let's dig right in. Suggestion for Guitar Geek resolution number 10. That is to care for your guitars more diligently. And I say this based on firsthand experience. Just the other week, I opened up my case from a Martin HD35, the first nice guitar that I ever purchased. And I noticed that, well, the finish was really cloudy on the guitar. The frets were oxidized because I hadn't played it in a while. The strings were just corroded and nasty. And I thought to myself, Tone, you're a poor guitar owner. You're, you're neglectful. You're not very good. And Instead of beating myself up too bad, I thought, you know, in 2020, I can resolve to take care of my guitars a little bit better. And I'm sure we all have that as guitar geeks. It's kind of like, oh, I should be, I'm kind of riding that thin line on not humidifying enough and hopefully the guitars are okay. So I want you to care for your guitars more diligently in the year 2020. In fact, I wanna recommend Music Nomad's products. I've talked about Music Nomad before here on the Acoustic Tuesday show, but there's a couple of products I wanna cite and I just am, overall, I'm completely wowed by these products. Uh, first of all, we've got the Guitar One uh, Finish Polish, which is four gloss finishes and it smells great and it works fantastically well. If you have a clouded finish, this will take care of it. Uh, also, I'll recommend, and this one, holy smokes, you wanna talk about a polish that will actually remove some of the crud and leave your guitar looking brand spanking new, uh, the Pro Strength Guitar Polish, which has, a, I believe, a wax in, in it uh, that, um, I'm sorry, this, uh, this has the wax in it. This one does not, this is just the polish. But this takes off some of those fine surface scratches and also removes some of that kind of crud that can build up in kind of the, uh, well, the underarm area, if you will. <laughs> and it smells like um, a mix between bananas and bubblegum is, is what I'm gonna call it, but it works fantastically well. And then also I'll recommend their F1 fretboard oil which leaves fretboards looking brand spanking new. Uh, a couple of other tools, they've got a, a, a detailing cloth and then a micro suede cloth for cleaning the frets, which pairs fantastic, fantastically well with their Frine Fret Polishing Kit, which has the Frine Fret Polish in it, which works great with this micro suede cloth. Uh, I just wanna recommend those products because that's exactly what I'll be using on that HD35. I've used the polish before, I've used the fret polish on other things before, and I have no doubt that these products will make my HD35 uh, look brand spanking new again. Now to see some of the stuff in action, let's check in with Rand from Music Nomad where he's using the very polish I'm speaking of. I'm Rand inside the Music Nomad lab, ready to show you how to clean and polish your high gloss acoustic guitar finish. There are three different products you can use from Music Nomad. Our guitar detailer, which is a straightforward safe cleaner that cleans the finish. Our guitar polish, which is a paste polish for restoration, for oxidation, or for sweat marks, or for swirls, or hazes, and scratches, for really deep polishing. And then our Guitar One, which is a revolutionary formula, unique to Music Nomad, that clean, polishes, and protects because of a wax, Brazilian Carnuba wax that's in this. And what you wanna do first with any finish is you wanna go ahead and get the dust off. This is Music Nomad's Nomad Tool. You can slide in to hard reach areas with it and remove all the dust because dust can scratch finish. It's not the product, it's usually the dust. Once it's clean, use a lint-free microfiber cloth. We recommend Music Nomad's guitar detailing cloth for really lifting and trapping. And all you do is you go ahead, you can spray it either on the guitar cloth or on the finish because our products are safe. Go ahead and spray it on the finish. Don't worry if it gets on different parts of the guitar. You just wanna lightly make circular motions Removing the dirt and debris. This is the Guitar One, Grade A Brazilian Carnuba Wax. Also has UV protectants in it. You might have a slight haze because of the wax. All you do is then you buff it off in a matter of seconds right afterwards. And you have a super clean finish. We polished it. We also have a wax. It's super soft. 
Music Nomad is a company that I just, they continually wow me. I, I, I'm wowed by the performance of their products. I'm wowed by the amount of research and dedication they have to their products. And they're the type of company that they offer things that are absolutely needed as an acoustic guitar geek, if you wanna care for your instrument. But they also think of things that just aren't thought of. Uh, example, the Acoustalock system, the Octo tool, uh, the Cradle Cube. They've got so many great, great innovative products. I strongly, strongly recommend you check them out. So resolution number 10, take better care of your instruments. Let's move to resolution number nine, and that is to, in the year 2020, record yourself playing. Now, you might be thinking, oh gosh, do I have to book studio time? I don't have any songs written. I, I just started playing guitar. I'm not gonna record myself. Let's just put the brakes on for a second. What I'm referring to here can be interpreted in many ways. So let me give you three different options for recording yourself playing, and more importantly, the benefits behind each. Number one, you can just use your phone. Just use your phone to record yourself playing. Right? You can use the voice memo feature or even take a video. Now, why would you do this? Well, it's really great to get an objective perspective on your playing because while you're playing, sometimes you don't realize that that chord you're playing is actually much cleaner than you think or that song you're playing is going much better than it feels like it's going. So recording yourself playing, you don't even have to share it with anybody. It's for your own use and for your own kind of objective perspective on how you play. Now, for those of you who might be thinking, okay, I can get behind that, but I want something that's a little bit different than just my phone. I want something a little bit more pro, maybe that offers up a little bit more option. Uh, so I would recommend maybe getting an interface that you can use with your computer, maybe a mic, mic cable, and things like that. This allows you to multi-track, which is awesome if you maybe are trying to sing and play at the same time, but you can't quite get it all together. You can record a rhythm track, sing along with it, and it's kind of a fun way to explore your creativity or you can uh, create a backing track and then multi-track a solo on top of it if that suits your fancy. Ultimately, recording through your computer does allow you many more options and offers you, well, a little bit better sound quality as well. And then the third option would be to maybe book yourself at a local studio and maybe put the songs that you've written down uh, on record or tape or digital. Um, what I'm saying here is, uh, actually, there's a lot of uh, nonprofit programs around that allow musicians to go into the studio at a very low cost or no cost and ultimately get you know one or two songs down. It's a great learning experience. It's kind of like looking at your playing from the outside. It's really cool to have that, that perspective on your playing because a lot of times you end up surprising yourself by thinking, wow, actually what, what felt a little bit rocky came across much more smooth. Now, if you're wondering, okay, this sounds fun. This is something I might wanna do in the year 2020, but I don't even know where to start. I found a great video from Reverb.com that explains kind of a basic home recording rig that you can have access to uh, at a pretty, well, inexpensive price. So here's that video. Hey friends, Joe here at Reverb, and today we're gonna to talk about the simplest ways to record your acoustic guitar at home. Before we get into any miking techniques, let's talk about the necessary components that you'll need. First of all, an audio interface. Many options for audio interfaces. We're using today a Focusrite 2i2, and then you will need some recording software. Uh, today we are using Audacity, which can be downloaded for free on a Mac or a PC. Whichever recording software you're using, make sure that you can select your audio interface for your input and output signals. Typically engineers like to use small diaphragm condenser microphones for acoustic guitar to get uh, some good uh, precise detail. Today we're using a Bayer Dynamic MC930, which is a part of a fairly expensive stereo pair, but there are more affordable options of course. That's just a short clip of that video. In fact, that video is about, I wanna say 12 or 15 minutes long, and it goes through some basic steps just to get yourself started and kind of uh, cross that initial hurdle or jump that initial hurdle where it's like, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing with this digital stuff. It's actually uh, become much easier uh, the more it gets developed and much more uh, user-friendly, much more plug and play. So make sure to check that video out. You can see the full thing at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. Now let's move to resolution number eight. Resolution number eight is one that, well, quite frankly, I want you all to commit to right this very second. I want you to commit to seeing at least one live concert in the year 2020. We can all do this together as guitar geeks. The benefits are so profound in going to see live music. Number one, 
it's just an enjoyable experience. You're there, you're seeing music, you're probably hanging with your friends, a couple drinks, it's just a good night out. The second benefit is you're looking at this from a guitar geek's perspective. So you get to see cool gear in action, maybe some cool guitars. You get to see an artist that you love, play the songs that you love, and sometimes they give them a little bit of a different treatment live in concert, which is so awesome. Plus, you always have that option to say, oh yeah, I saw so-and-so back in the day before they were big. That's always a cool thing to throw out at a family party. <laughs> but nonetheless, I want you to see a show this year because I gotta say, it's one of those experiences that I just think is magic. It's pure magic. In fact, I've got a clip that was, well, it was pure magic for me and I'll tell you the story behind it, but first, let's look at the clip. Here it is. pretty evident why I showed that clip. Uh, it was also a small win. Just recently, uh, Charlie Parr and Dead Horses were here in Bozeman, and I was lucky enough uh, at, to get on stage with them and, and play a couple songs, which was so awesome. But that's the kind of cool stuff that can happen at a local show. You might see somebody from your own musician community get on stage. You might learn about other musicians by seeing who opens for an artist that you really love. So there's so many cool things that can happen. Now, you also might be thinking, gosh, you know, going to a live show isn't really an option for me. I either maybe can't get out of the house or maybe there's just not a lot of acts that come through my town. That's okay. You can still make good on this resolution. Go to archive.org, A-R-C-H-I-V-E.org, and look up your favorite artist. And you'll be amazed at how many recordings may be available for your favorite artists. Live shows that maybe have never been released officially, but because of the goodness of the taping community, there is just hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of shows to sift through. In fact, one of my favorite things to do on a rainy day, or in this case, a snowy day, is to go to archive.org, look up Kelly Joe Phelps, and take in the one of four concerts that are on there uh, because I never had a chance to see Kelly Joe live when he was playing, but holy smokes, hearing it is cl close. It's close. It's not the exact same thing, but it's darn close. So again, you can still make good on that resolution. Now, to see all 10 of these Guitar Geek New Year's resolutions, the ones that I've discussed and the ones that I'm going to get to, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. You'll see the full list and more importantly, all the videos that I give you a sneak peek of during today's episode. Uh, you'll see them in their entirety at that URL, acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. All right, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, we talked about the holidays. You got an acoustic-infused holiday playlist that left you, well, being the star of the holiday party. In fact, your family and friends probably thought you were the hippest guitar geek on the block because, well, I hate to break it to you, you are the hippest guitar geek on the block because you watch Acoustic Tuesday. This week on Acoustic Tuesday, yes, we are diving into New Year's resolutions from a guitar geek perspective, the fun ones to talk about. Yes, not diets, not exercise, not budgets, the fun guitar-infused New Year's resolutions that you need to consider for 2020. And all of those are coming up right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 123. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, and this week, holy smokes, we are talking about New Year's resolutions, the fun kind. I am excited to dig in, but before we do that, we should probably, well, we should probably do a little guitar geek trivia. And this trivia question is right up my alley because I love festivals and here is your question of the day. In what year was the Walnut Valley Festival 
also known as Winfield, started? Was it A, 1968, B, 1972, C, 1975, or D, 1976? Go ahead and ponder this question, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Uh, the Walnut Valley Festival is one of my favorite festivals of all time, and I think you'll see why when I reveal the answer. I was actually pretty surprised at how much it's grown since its inception. All right. Well, before I dig into the rest of these New Year's resolutions, and I gotta tell you, I think you're really gonna dig number six, and I think you're gonna dig number one. But all along, I will say this. You're gonna get some candid videos that I think will get your creative juices flowing, get you inspired to create your own New Year's resolution. And speaking of your own New Year's resolution, I wanna know what your 2020 Guitar Geek New Year's resolution is. So in the comments below, please let me know. Put hashtag Acoustic Life 2020 and go ahead and type out your New Year's resolution for guitar. This could be learning a new style. It could be something that's not even on my list today. In fact, for the betterment of the Guitar Geek community, please share your New Year's resolution because I think we'll all get inspired from it. Now, moving right along, let's dive into Acoustic Guitar Geek resolution number seven, and that is to learn how to set up your acoustic guitar. I'm talking basic setup here. And why would you do this? Why would you spend time learning this? Well, I want you to have the confidence that you can make the guitar play the way you want it to play without always having to go to the repair shop. Now, I'm not talking major guitar surgery here, like fixing cracks or regluing a bridge or regluing a brace or things like that. I'm just talking basic acoustic guitar setup so you can get your guitar to play the way you want it to play. Ultimately, this gives you confidence in that, hey, you know what? I have control over my guitar. My guitar doesn't have control over me. And there is no better time to learn this skill because there's so much information out there. In fact, if you go to AcousticLife.tv, I've created a ton of different maintenance videos for you to check out, installing a strap button, basic truss rod adjustment, and things like that. But there's one video that was not created by me that I think is fantastic because of the graphics used. It was created by Stu Mac on how to adjust the action of your acoustic guitar. And here's a quick snippet of it. When we're talking about action, or string action, we're talking about the distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. Action affects how the guitar plays, feels, and sounds. Action's a personal preference. You might like it higher, you might like it lower. The style of music you play might influence your decision. For example, flat pickers, bluegrass players have heavier strings typically. They might like a slightly higher action because they have a heavier attack. Whereas a finger style player playing on a lighter gauge of strings might like it a little lower and have a really delicate touch on their picking hand. Again, it's all preference. There's no set rules here. If your action's too low and you have a heavy picking hand, you have a good chance you might get a fret buzz. If your action's too high, you might be having to work a little harder on your fretting hand than you need to. And if it's really high, you could be affecting your intonation. I'm gonna show you how to check your action, and that's something that anybody can do. Then, I'll show you how to change the action on an acoustic guitar. In this case, we're gonna be lowering the action. Adjusting the action on an acoustic guitar can be more involved than an electric guitar, but if you're patient and careful, you can do it. And it doesn't take a lot of tools to accomplish. Watch and see whether you wanna try it yourself or send it to a Again, you might be thinking, gosh, you know, I. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this on my main guitar. Don't worry, I've got some tips for you. Go to eBay, go to your local flea market, go to your local pawn shop and find a guitar that's of, well, not great value. Just a guitar that you could work on and ultimately develop your skills, develop your confidence so that eventually, when you get confident on that guitar that's, well, not so awesome, you can go to your guitar that is awesome and perform those very tasks with confidence. Now, like I said before, there's no better time to learn this because Stumac has an entire library of videos that you can check out. Not only do they have the library of videos, they've got the tools to match it. A uh, quick note on tools there in, in just a second, but also, uh, frets.com is another great resource. Uh, Frank Ford uh, runs that site and he's got step-by-step -step descriptions of some basic tasks from truss rod adjustment to uh, changing uh, the depth of the nut slots on your guitar, changing the saddle height and things like that. And also, if you keep your finger on the pulse of your local music scene, uh, you might find that there's actually some in-person workshops near you on that very topic, setting up your acoustic guitar. Now, speaking of tools, I told you I'd come back around to it. Make sure you have the right tools for the job. I cannot 
emphasize this enough because I've used tools that aren't the right thing for the job and it's created quite the conundrum. Uh, no damage was done, thankfully, but it takes a lot longer and it's much more frustrating. So I would encourage you to check out Stumac, also LMII.com, which is Luthier's Mercantile. They have some great tools uh, that are fit for the job, specifically for guitar. And I, I gotta say this, there's nothing better than getting the right tool for the job and completing that task in like half the time it would take if you were just kind of trying to find random tools around your house. Again, take it from somebody that's gone down the, the dark path there. <laughs> so uh, again, just a recap of that resolution, learn how to set up your acoustic guitar. Moving to resolution number six, Guitar Geek resolution number six. This one's fun and one that I think, well, you can include the whole family in, and that is plan a Guitar Geek day trip or vacation. This is one that, well, it's kind of fun to be able to share your hobby, your love with your family or your friends. So bring them along. They might get bit by the Guitar Geek bug. And one of the places that's on my list is in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and that is the Delta Blues Museum. They are celebrating their 40th anniversary I guess it'll be their 41st because we're coming into 2020 here. Uh, but here's a quick little snippet of a video I found about the Delta Blues Museum, and it's definitely fueled my fire because now I definitely want to go. Here it is. I came on board in July of 2003. The museum was located in the historic freight depot, and the Muddy Waters cabin was in the depot. And the Board of Trustees at that time wanted to expand the museum to showcase the Muddy Waters Cabin in a better means. So that was my direct first directive, and we began uh, writing grants uh, towards that end. And we finally were able to build a new wing in 2012 and move the cabin into that. As part of that directive, we've been able to develop plans for new permanent exhibits, which some of them are being installed right now in 2019, the museum's 40th anniversary. The new exhibits are just upgrading of what we're doing, so we're telling an even deeper blues story. We're utilizing larger graphics, and we're gonna add some video components and hopefully some interactive components. The Delta Blues Museum was founded in 1979, and Sid Graves and his board of the Carnegie Public Library founded it in a response to the tourists that were coming to Clarksdale, and they were looking for blues artists, blues sites, or anything about blues. And because we didn't really have anything at that time, they eventually wound up going to the library. First of all, I need to go anywhere there's a Muddy Waters cabin. When I saw that, I thought, okay, this just catapulted to the top of my list for Guitar Geek vacations, plus an entire museum dedicated to the Delta Blues. I mean, you saw some of the stuff in there, like cool cars, cool guitars, pictures, I mean, the harmonicas. I mean, what more can you ask for, right? So it doesn't have to be extravagant. You don't have to go to a faraway place. This could be a guitar maker's factory that you want to visit. It could be a guitar store that you've always wanted to visit. Groom Guitars in Nashville, Carter, Carter Vintage in Nashville, um, two, two of the ones that are on my list. I've been to Groom's old location, but I want to go to their new location. Never been to Carter's. Anyways, this isn't my personal list. I just want to share some ideas with you. It could be maybe one of your Guitar Heroes grave sites. I mean, that, that, that sounds a little morbid, but it's kind of a cool thing to pay respect and go see kind of, uh, well, where their final resting place is. I know when, when I was in Oregon, I wanted to go see John Fahey's grave, but it was three hours out of the way. I couldn't convince Whitney that that was a worthy detour, so lo and behold, I haven't been there yet, but it is also on my list. So plan a guitar geek vacation. It could be a day trip, it could be a full-on vacation, but it's a great way to get your family involved in your hobby and kind of share that love and maybe help others get bit by the guitar geek bug. Let's move to a resolution number five. Now this is one I wanna take some time on because it's something we can all do, but you might think, I don't know if I can really do this and that is teach someone else something on guitar. Now you might be thinking, oh, I just, I just started, I only, I only know a G chord, I, how can I teach anybody anything? What gives me the authority to teach somebody something? Or you might be thinking, gosh, I've been playing for a long time, I don't even know if I can teach. Well, 
What would I, how would I even approach teaching? Well, I found a video that I've longed, uh, I've long recommended uh, for, to students and, and other folks that are interested in teaching, interested in playing music, and I think it offers some of the best perspective on teaching and learning music. This is the best video I've ever found on the entire internet. Uh, no joke. I'm, I'm not kidding here. In fact, uh, we'll, we'll take in a quick snippet of it and then I've got a cool story to tell you about this very video. So here it is. Here are a few keys to follow in learning or teaching music. In the beginning, embrace mistakes instead of correcting them. Like a child playing air guitar, there are no wrong notes. Allow young musicians to play and perform with accomplished musicians on a daily basis. Encourage young musicians to play more than they practice. The more they play, the more they will practice on their own. Music comes from the musician, not the instrument. And most importantly, remember that a language works best when we have something interesting to say. Many music teachers never find out what their students have to say. We only tell them what they are supposed to say. A child speaks a language for years before they even learn the alphabet. Too many rules at the onset will actually slow them down. In my eyes, the approach to music should be the same. After all, music is a language too. Literally the best video on the internet. The best one. Because it takes something that seems so magical, teaching or learning music, and compares it to learning language. And how we all ultimately do that, we don't really stress about it. In fact, we all become teachers and students ourselves. And this comparison to that, that very scenario, to how it applies to music is, is really profound. I think it's incredibly profound and it's a video that I want you to take in in its entirety. Again, you can find it at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. Now, you might be thinking, okay, how does this manifest in real life? Well, on my, my scouring of the YouTube, I found another video that kind of brings this very lesson that Victor Wooten taught us to the forefront. And I've got a really interesting story about Victor Wooten. We'll get to that here in a second, but I want you to see again how this manifests in real life. So here's none other than Billy Strings sharing a lesson he learned in very much the way that Victor Wooten talked about learning music. You know, I was telling you folks earlier that when I was growing up learning how to play the guitar, my dad was playing a lot of uh, Doc Watson's music. And one of the tunes that really stuck out for me, I was, I was about six years old and when I was younger, I just played the rhythm. And my dad would play the lead, all the... All that, you know? And uh, when I was learning this tune, I kept messing it up on the, on the second part. I kept playing the wrong chord or something, and, and I got really frustrated. And I was about six or seven when this happened, and my dad was teaching me these fiddle tunes. And I got real frustrated, man. And right in the middle of the song, I just said, stop, just stop. And I go, you just play it, and I'll just listen. Yeah. You know? And so I listened to him play it, and I listened to what he was doing. You know, instead of just counting, okay, I stay on this for four times, and then I stay on that for four times or whatever. I listened to what he was doing instead of just counting it. You know, I listened, he was, okay, he's going... instead of trying to count it out. And then I was like, all right, I think I got it. And I freaking nailed it. And he just like, he reached over and squeezed my little hand and he was laughing. And man, it was the prou one of the proudest moments of my entire life. And one of the profound memories that I have that is the reason that I do this. And now this really strikes a chord with me pun very much intended, uh, because it's very much the way that I learned. My dad would play a song and I would try and mimic it. And it wasn't about you know him being better or me being worse. It was just about us exchanging ideas. And it was ultimately a really fun way to learn. And I didn't think about it at the time, but looking back, it was kind of like, 
Man, that was, that's just magic right there. It's just total magic. Now, back to the Victor Wooten video. So uh, he played the opening of the Rialto Theater here in Bozeman. In fact, that clip you saw earlier of Charlie Parr and Dead Horses, uh, that was at the Rialto Theater. Well, Victor Wooten played the opening of the Rialto Theater, and afterwards he went up to the bar, which is where I was at. I mean, I wasn't there for the whole show, but <laughs> I was there after the show hanging out with friends. Um, and Victor Wooten uh, came up the stairs, and I, I immediately went up to him and I said, Hi, you don't know me. My name's Tony. Um, I just want to say that that video you did about music as a language is one of the best videos I've ever seen in my life. And he just kind of looked at me and he gave me the smile and he said, thanks, man. And I just thought it was a cool exchange. So uh, that video really hits, hits, hits me in the warm fuzzies and I hope it does as well. And I hope it inspires you to teach somebody else a guitar lesson. Again, this could be this could be a, a, a kid, it could be a grandkid, it could be your neighbor, a guitar geek buddy. It could be just this wonderful exchanging of a small idea. It doesn't have to be an official lesson. It just could be you showing something to somebody else. And by doing that, you actually learn yourself. By being a teacher, you actually learn. So it's a great it's a great resolution for 2020, and I hope it makes your list of guitar geek resolutions. All right, moving on to something similar, but uh, a little bit different, a little bit different perspective. Resolution number four is to volunteer your musical offerings. What do I mean by this? Well, this could be you volunteering to play in your local church band, you volunteering at a local school to play for a kids program. It could be you going to play some tunes at maybe a senior center or a memory care facility. And I say this for two distinct reasons. This serves two very distinct purposes. And the first one is, well, it's gonna help you build confidence in your musical skills and give you kind of a project to work on. But number two, it helps you share music. And music is one of the most incredibly powerful things that you could share with any other human being, whether they play or not. I gotta say that music is one of those things that just really does unite us all, especially as guitar geeks, but but humans as as a whole. In fact, there's a there's a clip I found uh, some months ago of uh, uh, a son playing with his mother at a memory care facility. Unfortunately, she she was afflicted with Alzheimer's disease, and um, you wouldn't know it from this clip. In fact, she has the guitar in her hand. She's just playing like, like you wouldn't believe, and it's one of those things that just shows how incredibly powerful music is. So here's a quick glimpse of that clip. And dreams of yesterday So again, I want you to try and resolve to volunteer your, mu your musical offerings. Again, this doesn't have to be on a large scale thing. This could be something as simple as maybe a company party or even a family party. It doesn't have to be so official. It's just something that I want you to think about because music is incredibly powerful. I mean, you just witnessed it right there and it can really, uh, it could do so many different things for people. It could, it could pull them out of a slump. If somebody's not feeling so great, it could actually make them feel better. It could give somebody the guitar geek bug thinking, gosh, maybe, maybe I could do that. Maybe I could play. And ultimately it can just make somebody's day. And that's, what we just want to do. We just want to have fun and play guitar. So try and volunteer your musical offerings in the year 2020. Again, just a quick reminder, if you want to see the full list of my suggested New Year's resolutions, my guitar geek New Year's resolutions, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. You'll be able to see the full videos and also uh, all the resolutions in a nice convenient list for your consideration for the coming year. I mean, and you don't have that much time. I mean, it's 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 simply hours away. 2020 is right on the, we're on the precipice of 2020. And you could make it your best guitar year yet. In fact, I want you to do that very thing. Now, we're all guitar geeks. There's been a lot of discussion. In fact, the show two weeks ago about uh, my favorite five modern built blues guitars, uh, wow, did that create some comments. Holy smokes. 
Uh, and I want to dig into some comments from that very show. In fact, this first comment is kind of a, a combined comment because I listed my five favorite blues guitars. I listed some honorable mentions, and then I asked you to please let me know what your favorite blues guitar is. And wow, you all spoke up. I'm talking like mega time. So uh, here's a couple of comments that I picked. Uh, first from Red Dragon. He said, what about the Bourgeois LDBO? A fantastic blues guitar, and I'm kind of ashamed it wasn't even on my list. I feel bad, but I'm glad you reminded me, so thank you. The next one comes from David MC. He says, I think the Gretsch style 300 sounds and feels better than the Jim Dandy, but personal taste. Well, awesome, I, I actually had not heard of that guitar, so now I'm gonna go check it out. Uh, our next comment comes from Lambert Malloy, and he says, a Taylor Koa Mini is a fine blues guitar. And that speaks to that whole thing like, you know what, if you're playing the blues, whatever you got in your hands to play it with is exactly what you should play it with. And then our final comment on that same vein, uh, Bob George says, Tony, how could you forget about the Epiphone EL00 Pro? Great little bluesy guitar at an economical price as well. That one totally slipped my mind, Bob, and I'm glad you mentioned it in the comments. In fact, there were so many other guitars mentioned in the comments. The Gibson L00, I don't even know why that didn't cross my mind. That's absurd. Uh, the Santa Cruz uh, 1929 double or single O, I believe was mentioned. Uh, the Waterloo WLS, which is the Stella kind of version of the Waterloo was also, I mean, there was so many guitars mentioned. I was like, man, I should have expanded my list to many more guitars. But I wanna thank you all for participating in that discussion. And speaking of that discussion, our next comment comes from Palmer Grigsby, and he says this, Hey Tony, first time commenting, but long time viewer. Well, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'm absolutely in love with my triple O 15 M burst. Being a lefty, the horror, the horror. There's not much of an option under $2,000, and Martin is basically the only company in town that helps us lefty folk out. Also to add, I think blues is inside you. I'm a giant fan of Lightning Hopkins and Skip James. Both used non-traditional blues guitars from images and videos I've seen, but the blues just comes out of them. Both artists need more love and recognition. Incredible episode. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Palmer. Thank you for uh, watching the Acoustic Tuesday show and thank you for commenting and joining the discussion. Certainly appreciate it. Welcome to the Guitar Geek family. Our next comment comes from DC Bandy 72 and he has a small win, he or she has a small win to share. Tommy Emanuel show in Edmonton in 2020. Got me some tickets. I was trying to decide if I should get the Art and Luthery Roadhouse Parlor in Bourbon Burst. That is an acoustic music shop two, that is in an acoustic music shop two blocks from my home, and I heard Tony talk about it in, in this episode. Decision made. Later today at work, some extra shifts over the holidays came up, and I took them to pay for said guitar. I love it when the guitar gods smile upon me. I mean, talk about New Year's resolutions in action. He's already going to go see a show in 2020, Tommy Emanuel, no less, and it's gonna get a guitar. I mean, things are shaping up for a solid 2020. I can already tell from this episode that this is gonna be our best guitar geek year yet. As a community, we're gonna just plow through 2020. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna just, it's just gonna be just guitar infused acoustic goodness all 2020. And uh, David Scoggins says this, Tony, as such a Molly Tuttle fanboy, I can't believe that you haven't gotten a Molly Tuttle t-shirt or tattoo. Maybe it's one of those things which you just cannot get, you cannot convince your better half that you need. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know how that discussion would go. Generally, every year, Whitney and I get a matching tattoo of sorts to celebrate, you know, another year around the sun together. And uh, I don't know if I could say, hey, Whit, let's get a Molly Tuttle tattoo. However, a t-shirt I could get behind. I, 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 could, I could probably make good on that. Maybe that'll be one of my New Year's resolutions for 2020. I'll get myself a Molly Tuttle t-shirt. I've got all the albums, two of them signed. One of them has a personal message. I'm pretty happy about that. That's thanks to, uh, I believe that was uh, Dr. Dave uh, that sent me that, so I, I appreciate that. Our next comment comes from John Sapper. He says, hi, Tony. Had one of those unbelievable circular events because of you and your show. Talk about a guitar geek community. Check this out. Went to Vintage Blues Guitars website and realized, wait a minute, Lancaster? Wait, I know Bruce. He went to my high school and I vaguely remember jamming with him at least once at a party somewhere, I think. As I remember, he's a very talented guitarist and played great fingerstyle blues. I had no idea he had started that business because I hadn't seen him in years since I moved to the DC area back in 84. Awesome. I gotta say, that episode, the blues episode, was one that uh, really got so much attention. Uh, and, and talk about, I mean, connecting actual human guitar geeks in person. 
connecting people that haven't been connected since high school, no less. Now, speaking of connection, check out this next comment. It comes from none other than Piedmont Blues, the artist featured in that very episode. They say this, Hello, Tony. Thank you for featuring our duo in this episode of Acoustic Tuesday. We really appreciated your insightful analysis of, well, everything. It was so entertaining listening to you. You've just gained two new fans. Well, you've gained hopefully a lot of fans from the Acoustic Tuesday show because you guys totally rock. Hello, Valerie and Ben. You guys are awesome. Uh, some additional trivia for you. Now check this out. This is so geeky. I love it. My resophonic guitar is a Ron Phillips, which I now have to do some research on, so thank you. And the other one is a Taylor, the one that I referred to in the video, that belonged to John Cephas. Thanks again. Uh, so cool. So I want to thank Valerie and Ben for not only creating magical music, but also, well, watching the Acoustic Tuesday show, Guitar Geeks Unite. All right, uh, and speaking of connection, I mean, this is talk about, talking about full circle moments. I just feel like as a Guitar Geek community, we are definitely on the right track. Right track. This next comment comes from Vintage Blues Guitars, the website that I featured in that episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And they say this, hey, thanks for the shout out. If you're ever in PA, stop by. Bruce and Tom at Vintage Blues Guitars. Pretty awesome. So not only did somebody meet an old high school mate, but the artist commented and became an Acoustic Tuesday fan. And then Vintage Blues Guitars, the store that I featured, they commented as well. I mean, so cool. And I also have one more comment. Well, this isn't really a comment. This is more of a, a question that's been posed episode after episode. They say, man, Tone, we love this new production. What's going on? Who's actually running the production behind the show? Well, I can't reveal that at the present moment, um, but I can give you some clues and hints. Uh, this individual is a Star Wars fan. This individual is from Colorado and unfortunately uh, is a Colorado Avalanche fan. Uh, this individual is a stellar video person. And one more clue, this individual will be uh, revealed on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I just can't do it now. I can't do it now. I just can't do it. The timing's just not right. I'm sorry, but um, his initials are KW. Uh, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We'll move right along. Um, one more thing I want to uh, mention to you all is that you can support the Acoustic Tuesday show by buying Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. All you have to do is go to AcousticTuesday.store and holy smokes, will you be inundated with some amazing options. In fact, I have to be honest, yes, I ordered a mug, the Acoustic Tuesday, the official Acoustic Tuesday mug, which I strongly recommend. It keeps your beverages nice and warm and well, delicious if I, if I do say so myself. But that's not the only thing I ordered. I ordered uh, a couple of my favorites. Uh, the first was the Acoustic Tuesday full color logo shirt which I'll be sporting as I walk around town, waving my Guitar Geek flag. So this came in, I'm pretty stoked about that. Well, Christmas gift to myself. And then, I'm a hooded sweatshirt fanatic. I love them, it makes me feel like I'm in bed still. So I got this, uh, the, the premium Acoustic Life logo t uh, sweatshirt, which I'm super, super excited about. Whitney, on the other hand, might be like, dude, one of these has to go. I probably have 15 hooded sweatshirts at home that I don't, I don't wear all of them, unfortunately. I strive to, but I don't. So I'm pretty sure when I come home with that, she's gonna be like, what is your problem? Do you have an issue? Do we need to have a talk? But I'll just reassure her that hooded sweatshirts are my thing. Anyways, I'm encouraging you to go to AcousticTuesday.store uh, to buy yourself some Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. And after you do that, after you open the package, try it on, it fits like a glove and you love it, please snap a picture of yourself in the Acoustic Tuesday merchandise that you purchased and submit it at AcousticLife.tv. There's a submit link in the top menu. I wanna feature you on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. It's kinda like those magazine things, those local magazines where they're like, hey, when you're on vacation and you're reading this magazine, take a picture like at the Coliseum in Rome so we can show that our readers read this magazine at the Coliseum in Rome. It's the same idea, but it's a little bit cooler with Acoustic Tuesday merchandise because it just kind of shows, it's like a beacon. It's a guitar geek beacon, if you will. A guitar geekin. Uh, a guitar geekin, you get it? Anyways. <laughs> It's New Year's Eve, what can I say? I'm just feeling a little bit, I'm feeling a little bit crazy today. I, I mean, the party's not not for another couple hours, but I'm, I'm already in the mood. I'm, I'm ready to send 2019 packing and look forward to 2020, which is why I wanna get back into our resolutions. But before I do that, let's check the mailbag really quick. You may have noticed something new on my desk, and I have to thank Dom and Sharon 
uh, talk about amazing guitar geeks. We'll call them Mama and Papa Tack because, well, they're pretty amazing guitar geeks. They sent me this custom bobblehead. Yeah, that's the bobblehead cam right there. And if I if I look like this, it's like it's a spitting image. This is as close as I will ever get to professional hockey. Um, they had a a a custom bobblehead crafted for me. Uh, here I am, a member of the Blackhawks. It's like I, I picture this on fan night, where you go to the Hawks game and you're you're getting handed out Tony Policastro bobbleheads, and currently everybody's like. Who the hell is this guy? He's not on the Hawks. But anyways, it's just so cool. I, I was so excited when I opened, I couldn't believe it. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, whoa, they got the beard, they got the hair, they got the gold, I mean, they got the Hawks jersey. It, it, but, the, it, but the gift giving didn't stop there. They sent gifts for the entire TAC crew. They sent gifts for Whitney. I didn't open those because my name wasn't on them. But they also sent uh, a really nice card with some Santa's failed facial hair experiments, which I thought was pretty cool. And they also sent me, I got a message from them uh, earlier in the year that said that they were at a Don Ross concert. And they sent me a signed Don Ross album, which I was so pumped about. I mean, Don Ross is one of my favorite guitarists. He's a, he's kind of a, a trailblazer in the modern fingerstyle movement. A Canadian guitarist, no less. Uh, and a signed album. It says, Hi, Tony's Personalized. So thank you, Dom and Sharon. Much, much, much appreciation. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year to all you guitar geeks. Also, I want to cite uh, Tim K sent me a little, little holiday package with a very kind card, and uh, he, he knows the best way to my heart. I mean, first of all, it's an alien-type card, a little monster guy. Really dig that. Uh, coffee. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I, I cannot drink enough coffee, apparently. And he sent a CD that he actually recorded on it, two years in the making uh, with his church. And uh, I was really, really pleased to get this and read about how, uh, how proud of it you are. So I'm proud of you, Tim. Thank you for sharing this with us. And uh, so that's the mailbag for today. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, my clothes came in. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I think we'll wrap up 2019 with a solid, solid mailbag. Uh, now let's dig into my top three Guitar Geek New Year's resolutions. Um, by the way, the bobblehead cam, that was our new video guy's idea. K KW, those initials. And I think he, I think he's a little offended at the Blackhawks logo on it. It makes, makes, makes me wear my jersey with so much more pride, even though the Avalanche are just stomping the entire league this year. Total side discussion. Anyways, uh, let's get to those top three Guitar Geek resolutions. And re resolution number three is to attend or play a local open mic. Now, before you say, Tone, you're, you're out of line here. I can't, I can't have you tell me to go play an open mic. That's why I, ch I chose to include the word attend. And I have a story to share with you about my first open mic, but we'll get to that in a second. I want you to try and attend or play an open mic if it's something that aligns with your guitar journey and where you think it's going or where you want it to go. Because there's nothing better to unite guitar geeks. There's nothing better than to go and support your local musicians in your area, which is where the attending portion comes in. Or if you feel like playing, go up there and play it. And if you're wondering, God, how the hell do I even approach that? Back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 93, I offered up five tips on how to approach your very first open mic. What to do, how to kind of calm your nerves as best you can. Coffee is not one of them, by the way. Um, so make sure to check that episode out if you are indeed resolving to play an open mic this year. But in terms of why I chose to include attending as an option is because that's how I played my first open mic. I simply attended. I went and watched because I was curious. I had all these images floating around my brain of what an open mic actually is. Never having gone to one, my images and scenarios I created were pretty wild. Uh, after actually going to one, I realized, man, this is a supportive group of people. And there's, there's people of all sorts of experience levels there, all sorts of talent levels, if you will. And they're all just getting up there to play because, well, that's what they want to do. And it was so cool to see that support. In fact, I felt the support was so strong. I feel like that's a Star Wars reference. The support is strong. Oh no, the force is strong. Anyways, we can we can modify it for a Guitar Geek reference. The support is so strong at open mics, at some open mics, I actually got up the first one I attended and used the house guitar to play a song that I had just learned. And I fumbled through, I stopped about three times. It was interesting. And if I can find the CD, 
I think I have. I think I have the audio recording from it. If I can find that, I'll share it on an Acoustic Tuesday show. I know it's in one of the, the boxes I packed up. Whitney and I are moving, side story. But anyways, I'd love to share that on, on, a, sh on a future show because it's it was so cool because people applauded after I was done and it gave me this confidence like, whoa, I just did that. It allowed me to kind of jump over that first hurdle of just doing it and then it led to more open mics and then I kind of, it was part of my routine. So I want to encourage you in 2020, if it aligns with your guitar journey, to at least attend an open mic or you know what, if you're feeling confident, if you're feeling frisky, go ahead and play an open mic. Moving on to resolution number two, we're getting close to number one and I'm excited for you to hear that one because it's probably the most profound thing you can do for your guitar journey. But before we get to that, let's dig into resolution number two and that is to pick an artist or technique to intensely study in the new year. And this is one of those things that I think you can take to an extreme. I don't want you to take it to an extreme. I don't want you to like try and learn a brand new song every single day. That's kind of an unreal expectation, but really draw your focus to an artist or a technique that you really want to learn and make some headway throughout the 2020, throughout the year. And for me, this year, I'm focusing on Mississippi John Hurt. I have long admired the way that he plays, uh, but I've never really taken time to really dig into his specific technique. And he has a very specific right hand technique, one in which that I think if I learn it, it will open up new areas of my own playing that I maybe never realized were there. So I'm gonna focus on Mississippi John Hurt. I'm gonna try and learn a handful of songs by him, but more importantly, I'm really gonna dig into his technique and approach because I think it's something that will, well, it'll, I think it'll help me become a better guitarist and a, and a better guitar geek. And I wanna encourage you to do the same this coming year. Pick an artist that you just wanna grab a couple little pieces of technique from and, and try it out, try and learn it this year. Cause I think, well, we got 12 months ahead of us. I think you can make some headway. In fact, for those of you who might be thinking, you know, I wanna dig into blues. Blues is something I really wanna to get to know a little bit more. I've got good news for you because there's a five day blues challenge coming up. In fact, it's free. I'll be announcing the details here on the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's something I want you all to participate in because, well, you'll learn about the blues, but also it's a great way to come into 2020 with a nice small win and already feeling some progress and some, well, some just good blues feelings under your belt. In fact, not only will you be learning the blues, a new 12 bar blues progression each day for five days, you'll also be able to look at what you learn and say, wow, the blues applies to, well, a lot more than blues. It applies to other music, like uh, things like song form, things like how to infuse a lick with playing rhythm guitar. That's all gonna be discussed and I don't want you to miss it. So make sure to stay tuned to Acoustic Tuesday so you can get all those awesome, awesome details. And which brings me, and which brings me, which brings me to our final New Year's resolution. Resolution number one, this is something that, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this resolution for you. Whether you admit to it or not, uh, I want you to do this in 2020. And that is make fun your number one priority on guitar. All too often, frustration creeps in. All too often, we delay fun for that magical moment where well, if I learn enough stuff, then I'll be able to finally have fun. Or if I learn a full song, then I'll be able to finally have fun. Or only when I play like Eric Clapton will I be able to really have fun with guitar. Yeah, that's kind of true, but there's no reason in delaying fun. I want you to get in touch with the reason why you started guitar in the first place. For a lot of us, it started when we were kids. For some of us, this is a new addition to our life. But bottom line, you probably got into the guitar to have some fun you probably got into guitar for it to be a release for you, for it to be a source of enjoyment, for a source, uh, a source of fulfillment, a source of getting in touch with something that you thought you could do and lo and behold, you're doing it. Whether you just started, you've been playing for a while, you're doing it. You are a guitar geek, you are a guitar player, whether you know one chord or 500 million chords. And I want you to keep in touch with this reason, this fun because fun fuels progress, bottom line. If you're not having fun, that's when the guitar starts to become dusty in the corner. That's when you feel this, this weird sense of obligation, like, oh, I guess I have to play guitar now because I committed to it. That's not a fun statement. I don't want the guitar to turn into this reminder of the things that you didn't do. I want the guitar to be a source of fun for you. If you're not having fun on the guitar, that's when the guitar goes under the bed. In the, in the case, only to be opened up years and years and years down the road. I want you to have fun every time you pick up your guitar. 
That's what I want you to strive to do for 2020. Above all else, just have fun. Because I'll tell you what, the more fun you have, the better off you'll be. Because you're gonna, that fuels progress, that fuels that fulfillment, that whole reason you got into guitar in the first place. So for 2020, make fun your number one priority on the guitar. Now again, I wanna remind you that you can find all of these suggested Guitar Geek New Year's resolutions at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123. And uh, you'll also see the full videos that I've uh, uh, kind of gave you little sneak peeks of. In fact, uh, if, if for no other reason, go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT123 to check out that Victor Wooten video because I think that should be your very mantra for 2020. All right, we're close to the end of the show, uh, but I wanna wrap it up with a nice little Guitar Geek trivia session. So as a quick reminder, here's your question that I asked you at the beginning of the show. In what year was the Walnut Valley Festival, also known as Winfield, started? Was it 1968, 1972, 1975, or 1976? Well, I'm happy to say that if you answered B, 1972, you are 100% correct. The Walnut Valley Association was formed in 1972 with its sole purpose to produce the Walnut Valley National Guitar Flat Picking Championships Festival. Wow, that's a mouthful. What began with 10 acts and two contests in 1972 now boasts over 30 acts and eight contests, including two international contests, five national contests, and one Walnut Valley contest. The contests are a major part of the festival. Over the course of years, the contests at Winfield have attracted more than 3,000 contestants from all 50 states, as well as many foreign countries, including, but not limited to, Australia, Canada, my heart goes out, Denmark, Sweden, England, Germany, Italy, Japan, New Caledonia, I don't even know where that is, Switzerland, and Wales. Uh, pretty amazing that Winfield uh, has, has attracted that many different uh, well, contestants from all those different countries. It's crazy. Now, if you if Winfield or, or, or the Walnut Valley Festival is not on your radar, uh, you absolutely need to have it on your radar. It's, I believe, the third week in September, and just to go there to feel that the acoustic community, the acoustic kind of guitar geek community, but also to see some of the amazing talent of all ages. There's band competitions. There's uh, there's there's kind of the the it's a place you go to to discover these bands that you never have heard of and then you leave the festival thinking, holy smokes, my life is so much better because I heard all this music. That's what that's what Walnut Valley is. It's really a, a great sense of community and something that I want you to experience as a guitar geek. So make sure to put that on your radar. All right, well, I, I'm, I'm ready to send you off to your New Year's Eve party. I want you to be safe. I want you to have fun. And I want you to seriously think about 2020, this upcoming year. What can you do to make your guitar journey more fun, more fulfilling, and connect with more guitar geeks? So since we're talking about the future, I should probably take a quick sneak peek into next week to see what we're gonna discuss on the very first Acoustic Tuesday of 2020. I have a feeling I'll have much clearer vision, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The guy is so cheesy. Uh, okay, uh, here we go. <laughs> so next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we'll be digging into the blues again in preparation for the Five Day Blues Challenge. We're gonna talk about some must attend festivals and an artist who makes music come alive without an instrument. Plus you're gonna get the scoop on two guitars that will have you singing the blues in the best possible way. Yes, it's gonna be another blues-infused episode next week on Acoustic Tuesday, and I don't want you to miss it. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv, where you can do a deep dive, deep dive on anything I have ever talked about on Acoustic Tuesday. I wanna wish you the best and safest Happy New Year. And gosh, you know what, this is my, this is my opportunity to say two things. I want 2020 to be the year of Guitar Geeks uniting, and I also wanna say this because I love it. I'll have to, I guess I'll just catch you next year. <laughs> Happy New Year's Eve to you. Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2020 on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Thank you so much, Guitar Geeks Unite. Cheers.